So, Corey, how do you know when you're ready to start dating again and find a good relationship? One of my favorite quotes from Jim Rohn is he said, I'll take care of me for you and you take care of you for me. You really have to focus on yourself, developing yourself, your life, your friendships, the things that you do for fun socially. Get to a happy place first. A place where you love your time alone, you love being single, you love being by yourself, but you also appreciate the company of other people. You don't feel like you have to have somebody in your life because we all know people that as soon as they have a breakup, a few days later, a week later, they're dating somebody else or talking to somebody else and they don't really take any time to be alone and to heal from that previous relationship. When you get to a place where you're having a blast being single, enjoying your life that's when somebody seems to come out of the blue out of left field and you just meet you click and it's just easy and effortless from the time you meet so when you get to that place when you get to a happy place when you can be happy being alone and you've had time to heal you know what you want you know why you want it. I always tell people to make a list of all the qualities like two columns all the qualities that are like must-haves or that you really want and all the qualities in another column of all the things that you don't want. And if you got 15 or 20, it's like pick like the top 8 or 10 that are like the most important to you and order them that way. And then also write a love letter. Like what would you say to this person when you're in a relationship, when you're in love and you're really happy? Tell, write down all the things that you love about them in that love letter. And, you know, whatever you focus on expands. So by having the list of what you must have and what are the deal breakers if you don't? And having the love letter helps you focus on it. Like even when you get real specific, it's kind of like the I talk about in my book Three Percent Man. It's like when you buy a new car and then you, you drive it for a few days. You look around. It seems like you see that car everywhere now, even though you did just a few days or a week or so ago when you didn't have it, you didn't really notice them that much. It's because your brain is is focused on that. So give your brain the script, if you will, or the roadmap or the characteristics that you want in somebody and review it every day. Put Tape it to the back of your medicine cabinet. Have it in your phone and you'll notice that you notice more people that match that and you tend to meet more people that match that. Another thing I've noticed, <clears throat> or at least from what I've learned, is that no one really knows exactly when they're ready to have a relationship unless that person comes into their life. Um, it's happened before with me and it's happened before with other guys I've dated. Um, and especially if they try to let you down easily, they always, me personally, that's one of the most common excuses that they use. Now, granted, there are actually people out there that aren't sincerely ready for anything and they, they just want to live life as it is. But really, you don't know when you're ready. You can't just like time it or or and whatnot. Just when you find that person and the right opportunity comes, you take it. Sometimes you have to, again, speaking from experience, sometimes I think it's also a good thing to give someone a benefit of the doubt especially if you're curious um at least with me that's what happened with my current boyfriend he had asked me out and I accepted the uh invitation for a date but I do remember telling him that I couldn't I wasn't gonna guarantee anything because I don't know I, I I couldn't I basically told him that I'd be down to go on a date but I won't guarantee anything, but I'm more than willing to get to know him. And little did I know, he ended up becoming my boyfriend. So sometimes you have to give that person the benefit of the doubt. You don't know what could happen if you don't give anything a shot. You know, when you know, you know, something like that, you yeah. know, like you wouldn't even question it. And I see that it says, find a good relationship. It says, how do you know when you're ready to start dating again and find a good relationship? Mm -hmm. The key word is you don't find it. It comes to you. Mm -hmm. and It's not about finding the right person. It's about becoming the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to become what you want to attract. Mm -hmm. So 
Like for me, I know mentally I'm not ready for a relationship at all because I'm not at my full potential of maturity. And there was a lot of mistakes I've did I've done in my past relationship. And I know even though I'm aware of them right now, I am afraid and I know the minute I get into another relationship, it's going to be another cycle again. So until I know for sure that I'm done with whatever I used to do in my past, then I In other words, when you get done heating up leftovers? No, I don't eat leftovers. (laughs) 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 It doesn't satisfy me, but... Same. um, But the opportunity is there to heat up those leftovers. Not even leftovers. There's a a bunch of meals that I could grab if I wanted to. Do I want Mm -hmm. to? Nope. But you're going to be having one of those meals visit you soon. Yeah, I'm going to throw it in the trash. But, <laughs> yeah, you, you just This video know. will come out after he has visited you, of course. Oh, Lord. You, you just know when you're ready to open yourself up. Yeah. I think, well, at the moment, it's 2022, and I feel like this is my year for my career, my dream goals, and I'm not looking for a relationship. If it comes, it comes, but I don't think it will come. Because now, like, I have high standards. I'm not lowering my standards. I I would love for a guy to take me out and not be like, oh, what you're doing? Or let's link or come over, like the typical thing guys would do. That I want to stay away from, so. No There's booty a, calls. No more booty calls. I'm okay more with that. More substantial booty calls. Yeah. High class. High, <laughs> <laughs> high class. But, Yeah. I mean, being in a relationship, like it's a commitment. I don't know if anyone could be ready for that and start dating again. Dating is fun, but I'd rather not look for it. It has to come to me. It's definitely something you can give a, uh, give it a shot when the opportunity comes, like I've mentioned. But obviously, you have to be honest with yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. Macy? Um, I truly think that you have to love yourself, flaws and all, before you can love someone else. So if you know at the end of the day that you're going to bed with something that, you know, you just can't accept that you are, how can you accept someone else when you can't accept yourself or can't love yourself? Mm-hmm. So until you can realize that and, you know, love yourself every flaw, every good thing, bad thing, you'll never be able to do that with someone else. Can't give away what you don't have for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think Corey definitely has a point in terms of giving yourself the time and the space to uh, be single. I have a friend who she has not uh, been single, I guess you could say, for many years. Um, and I wouldn't say that she's used to being in a in a relationship per se, but I personally wouldn't. What I. Definitely, in my case, I had some time and I felt it was something definitely appropriate, let alone if you've been in a relationship for so long. So, I think if you know, you'll know. Yeah. yeah. You'll feel it. You, mm-hmm. Those butterflies and your heart starts to like pound, pound. Yeah. And then you know like, ooh. But I have not felt that. So, yeah. Down the trash. And take yeah. your time. Take it easy. That's the best thing you can do. It's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to jump. And don't Make settle. Jump, yeah. yeah. You'll yeah. know it'll feel right. It always has. And when you ignore that, it doesn't work out too well. Mm. Yeah, definitely don't mm. settle. I'm at that point where I'm, like, tired of dating. <laughs> like, if I'm going to get in a relationship, it's going to be, like, we're going to marriage at yeah. that point. Same like, here. I'm tired of the little one month, three months, a year, and then it cuts off. And, of course, you don't have control of that, but it's, like, if your mind isn't like there like that's why you're gonna be with me then I don't want it so you're dating with a purpose with a purpose yeah, yeah. 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 If you, you don't, don't see me as your future wife don't leave me alone no, like, yeah. leave me alone I don't want to deal with it and the short ones like you saying one month or three months but I mean, you don't want kids yeah, yeah I don't want kids well, why would a guy get married if you don't have kids I mean why, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free because we could have hella cats and puppies in a farm also, there's mm-hmm. guys out there that don't want kids either. Yeah, so. And so a lot of guys these yeah. days don't want kids. They want dogs or cats. Yeah, and or cats. I'm sure I'll find a man who wants the same. Who mm. wants kids? They take up. I'm sorry, but they take up <laughs> a lot good. of your time and energy and money. So, 
Definitely again, for sure. Again, that goes back to finding a good relationship. It's a relationship that uh, complements you as a person. Um, yeah, I think it's also good to have your differences, but the majority of your standards have has to match with that person because if not, it's not a fruitful relationship. Exactly. Like say if Caroline doesn't want kids and she finds a guy that wants to have kids, that's not something that would work on her book. Yeah, you'll clash. Yeah. If you love them, though, you'll have kids. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I'm just young right now, I guess, in a, in a mindset that, like, kids aren't in the So book. it's not that you don't want kids, but with the right guy, you'd have kids. Maybe. Because I still don't see myself taking care of a kid or caring about it enough, you know. I, I can't even take care of my cat. She's a hassle, and I'm just like, do you want her? Do you want her? I thought you wanted Mocha. Now you're ready to you give see? Mocha away? You see? Now now imagine a child. Away? You're <laughs> stuck with that child. Yeah. There's no here. Take it. There's now you're no ready more. to get rid of her again? <laughs> a little bit, but I love her. We'll see. I mean, would a child tomahawk on walls and run away? No, it'll poop on you, throw up on you, scream at night. when You can't poop Pull you? your hair, your ears. No, I'm saying a child would do oh. that. Yeah. Like a child that's a lot. Yeah. yeah like when the kid's got to go, it just goes. Then they start drawing on walls sometimes. <laughs> and then they take their diaper off and they smear the poop all over the oh, walls. No. Yeah. They walk around. They grab like they their, they they use their little potty the first time. And they run down the hall. Like what, I remember Dominic was telling me this story. I think it was his son. He he, he pooped in the, <laughs> in the little, you know, those little training <laughs> toilets that the kids have. Mm-hmm. And he picked the whole thing up and went running. Daddy, daddy. No. You know, it's like shh, 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 shit slopping all over the walls. It's oh like, my man, gosh. Okay. One of the Good things, things to look forward to. One of the things I kind of do uh, dread is the terrible twos. I remember this one time I was heading uh, out of town with one of my friends. And again, like I actually like kids, but temper tantrums are, are a bit tricky to handle sometimes. I remember seeing this lady with her kid and her kid literally like just plopped on the floor crying and I'm just I'm just like I I don't know how to react all I know is that thank god for condoms right yes 100% they're dramatic no slipping one past the goalie no but imagine that a child screaming in in public I I think I'm scared for that I think that's I think I could handle that it's the teenagers I couldn't handle oh yeah yeah. teenagers because you were on wheels yeah I was But again, not talking bad to the people who have kids. I, I totally again, I, I really like <laughs> you kids. Got that vibe. Mm-hmm. I I'm definitely. Innocent. Yeah, I'm an innocent child of God. Yeah. I am. I definitely like kids, but I'm just. Mm. 